Okay. okay. Hello. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for being here today. Hope everyone's doing okay. So we are... I'm just about to play something for you. So welcome to Become a Profit Magnet, How Storytelling Builds Your Sales. This is a webinar series from Project Positive Planet, a collaboration between um, Well World TV, Caribbean We, We Consulting, and Papilia. So we're really excited to have uh, Richard D'Ambrosio, owner of Travel Business Mastermind, among a, a slew of other awesome things that he is, Stephanie Rust, founder of We Consulting, Caribbean We, and I'm your host, Sophia Heiderhawk, founder of Papilia. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for having so, us, Sophia. Yeah, so welcome. Really excited to be here. Um, yeah, I love it. I would absolutely love it. Um, for, for us to get started, because we have a lot of really cool things to talk about today. Um, Richard, I think you have a really, really neat way of finding people's, helping people find their stories and then helping them use that, um, infusing that into their businesses. Um, so I'd love for you to be able to talk a little bit about that. Um, Stephanie, I think you also have a really neat way of um, helping fe people feel really natural about themselves and feel comfortable speaking. So first, I'd love it um, for Stephanie, actually, if you could just talk a little bit about yourself. Richard will talk a little bit, uh, introduce yourself, and then we'll dive into some questions that I have. Awesome. So was I first? I wasn't paying attention. Yes, yeah, you're first. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Um, just so you know, the chat is interactive. So at any point, if you have questions, um, we're happy to stop the presentation and bring those to light. Um, I work primarily in spa and wellness, hospitality, and tourism consulting. We also have an association for Caribbean wellness uh, and spa professionals. And yeah, my journey really is just to make others successful in whatever way I can. And we're excited to have you all here and have Richard joining us for this amazing, I think having a concise brand story and connecting emotionally is one of the most important things we can do as entrepreneurs and people in the workforce. So I'm excited for today. Thanks. Thanks, Stephanie. Thanks for being Thanks. here. Pleasure. And Richard? Yes. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Stephanie. It's, it's so important, um, especially now, coming out of you know COVID and, and hopefully that's going to be sooner rather than later, that anybody who is either owning a business or your business um, is related to a prominent entrepreneur who owns it, their brand, their personal story, that we come out of COVID with those stories firmly in our heads. Um, as you know, Stephanie teaches people how to speak and how to tell their stories. We all know that we fall in love with people and we want to do business with people who we trust and trust is going to be at a premium coming out of this coronavirus madness because there are so many foundations that have been pulled out from underneath us. So looking forward today to kind of giving you a framework around, you know, how to start thinking about letting your stories come out in a powerful way. Very interesting. And what I do um, in my company, I work a lot with diversity equity and social inclusion um, work with it with travel organizations and destinations and it's always about helping people find that um, authenticity within themselves first their story so they can also connect with others so um, when Richard and I actually met we talked that was the first thing we talked about and look here we are now <laughs> Uh, so, so um, I have a question um, for you, Richard. Um, I'm looking at my notes right now. I wrote it down. Um, what are we experiencing right now with respect to um, the consumer's desire for content? Yeah. Well, it's interesting. Um, I've been following a couple of different researchers. Um, Chartbeat is one of them. And originally, you know, obviously because the stressor was wanting to know if you're 
if yourself, your family, your friends would be healthy, it was all about COVID. But um, according to Chartbeat, the demand for that content is starting to dip. Um, people are becoming accustomed or acclimated to this environment that we're in. And they're starting to reach out for other things now. So you see a lot of travel companies are doing um, virtual tours. They're doing things that are distractions from this whole, you know, keeping up with COVID and where is it at and what's the tally count. So uh, I believe for anybody out there who's a travel entrepreneur, um, someone who's part of this grander travel ecosystem, if you have genuine content that's designed for a specific type of con um, client, now's the time to start thinking about that story and how can you convey it in a, in a compelling manner. It's hmm. a really good point. So then what are we hearing um, from reliable sources about consumers? Like what, how consumers are thinking um, or how they're going to make their travel decisions? Uh, definitely trust is huge. Um, so you've started to see the American Hotel Lodging Association, um, National Restaurant Association, the big hospitality travel associations are trying to get out in front with you know white papers and other communications that mm -hmm. say this is how our industry should be approaching this. Of course, those entities who have sizable budgets and can hire consultants, um, Marriott has been out in front, American Airlines, Hyatt, um, there are quite a few brands that have said, you know, we're going to do a lot of this on our own with our own um, our own dollars. And they've already announced, you know, a week or two ago, you should start to trust staying with us, traveling with us, flying on an airplane again, because these are the things that we're starting to do to mitigate the risk. Um, the one big thing right now is that there's still a lot about coronavirus that's unclear. So, you know, we're talking about antibodies and how antibodies might play a role in herd immunity and, and us being able to emerge from this craziness. But, you know, you can listen to Dr. Fauci and some of the other experts who are saying, we don't know just yet. So that mm -hmm. kind of, that puts a little bit more you know, uncertainty out there. And consumers are looking for some kind of certainty, um, which is why I think, you know, we're all, we've all been hearing the last three to four weeks mm -hmm. is that no matter what happens with travel restrictions, if the UK was to open tomorrow, people, I'm in the Hudson Valley in New York, my neighbors are more likely to drive to Cape Cod, mm -hmm. to the Catskills, to the Adirondacks than they are to hop on a plane with British Airways or American Airlines to London, those are firm, you know, things that you're not going to be able to change. But before I shut up, one thing that I tell my clients all the time is that please don't look at the world as monolithic mm -hmm. because there are subsets of consumers mm -hmm. who, believe it or not, will get on that plane to London the first chance they get mm -hmm. because their makeup, their personality isn't one that's fear-based. Their personality is, I've got money, I've been dying to get to London, sorry to use that word, I've been desiring to get to London, and I'm going, or I'm desiring to go to Tulum, and I'm going. And so please, anybody who's listening, understand that you do not have this big block of consumers. There's, there's, you can shave that block numerous ways. The biggest block may be one that says, no, I'm staying local first. Mm -hmm. I think it's um, I think it's interesting because I've been looking at different um, destinations and they've been putting out a lot of different videos um, and the people the people part always pulls at my heartstrings. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of these videos are finally of of have representation of people in from that destination and it's a really it's a really um, for me it's a very um, inspiring video vid videos like. Indiana's had them, Indianapolis has had them, Visit Norfolk has had them. Um, and I want to go check it out now because I can see how people um, are so passionate about their city. Um, so my next question for you is how, how can we be more authentic uh, storytellers? Well, I definitely think it all starts with you personally. Um, what I have found, I'm uh, I've been at corporate communications or journalism for over 30 years. 
And it's astonishing to me, um, I'll go back to the 99 out of 100 rule. Um, 99 out of 100 people don't know the compelling story in their life. They don't see it because they're too close to it. Um, they don't see it in terms of the business that they started. They, you know, if as a journalist, if I interview somebody, what I'm looking for is that thread of commonality between that person's life, uh, throughout that person's life, and how that personifies who they are, how that now seems to infuse the way that they run their business. And I think you know, trying to get in touch with yourself, um, looking at your business and how you project it out, mm -hmm. and then stepping back and saying, does that really sound like how much I, I love myself? And I really want to use that word, love yourself. Mm -hmm. Because when you love yourself, um, the strengths and the weaknesses, the what's the John Legend song? Um, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the one where he's, you know, he says, I love you curved and all, or something like that. <laughs> mm. oh, anyway, man. he said, you know, we are we are beautiful just the way we are, our faults and our strengths. And sometimes the faults are the reason why we're so good on the opposite side. So what I ask everybody to do as you think about, as you do an audit of your brand, of your marketing, of your social news feed, um, is take a look at whether or not you feel in love with that description of yourself. Because if you can fall in love with that description of yourself, then you are starting to set up your ideal client, your ideal prospect to fall in love with you too. If you look at it and you say, well, this person sells this stuff really well. I really sell my tours very well. Um, my airport transfers you know, are polished automobiles and you know, people who care. Okay, mm -hmm. but everybody else is selling that. Mm -hmm. What is it about you that's making me connect directly with you? And if you don't start from an internal audit and assessment, and we'll kind of go over a little bit of that today because it's a difficult process to do on a webinar. If you can go through that process and start to fall in love with yourself again, it's going to give you energy to want to go and do that marketing, to refashion it, to, to, to refine the words that you use but it really does start with you. And so many people don't get that. I've, I've had incredible salespeople who I've interviewed for corporate newsletters. And when I send them the raw copy and say, okay, this is what we're sending to the publisher. And they look at me and they say, where did you get that from? And I say, you told it to me. Okay. So many of us are not in touch with what we know and, and who we are. And that to me is my biggest message for the rest of the day today get to know yourself and fall in love with that person because they're worth it. I like it. Well, you have, um, and Pat Dutcher says, John legends, all of me. Yes, Pat. That's yes. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> all your current and all your edges. Yep. That's right. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. Uh, well, you have um, a fantastic presentation that you've put together, and I would love for you to um, share sure. that, start sharing yeah, that now. Started. Okay, I'm going to slides. Now I'll get it started I'm, for you. Okay, so we are going to uh, go through this. Um, and, you know, if there's, I can't see now the chat room, so if you do have questions during it, I don't know if either Stephanie or Sophia can just we've let me it. know. No problem. Really simple agenda, guys. We're going to talk about why stories work in the human brain. And some of this you may have already heard. But then we're going to start you down the path of writing your story. And the writing your story path is really a process. It's understanding the, the narrative building process and how you can start thinking about the many ways that you already market. How does that translate through storytelling? So first of all, this is me. I've done a lot and I've been around a lot and I'm probably a lot older than I want to admit. But um, you know, the key thing here is I've gotten the opportunity to tell stories in a range of different places for different types of clients. And what I can tell you is when you write something at somebody, you're, you're, selling, you're telling them what the services are that you offer. You're telling them the things they need to follow for company policies. That gets less attention and less retention than if you told people an example of how that would come to life. Storytelling is just, it's so natural to the human brain that it's a much more powerful way to try to use marketing and sales. So with that, 
No better a uh, expert than Seth Godin. It is not about the stuff that you make. And I would say for some of us, the stuff you sell, it is about the stories that you tell. Why is that? Well, because researchers have looked at the human brain. They have tested the human brain in storytelling situations. And what we know about storytelling is it does keep our attention longer. If you are listening to someone tell you about a security policy at your corporation, you're going to shut down in the first 30 seconds. But if that security chief tells you about an occasion that happened when security policies weren't followed and something difficult happened at the end of that story because people didn't follow policy, you're waiting. You've got the, the narrative arc that gets you hooked and you're like, oh, this, they're telling me that something's going to happen at the end. I've got to pay attention. So it's a very natural thing that if we develop this tension along the narrative, and I'll show you some of those tools to do that, you keep people paying attention. Um, mm -hmm. Second thing is, is that it's a, it's a connecting tool. Um, it's harder for me to connect with the security guy as he tells me about the policies I'm supposed to follow. But if he tells me that he's a retired police officer, that he joined mm -hmm. corporate America to be the security chief for a building because he was there on 9-11 and he saw what happened when people followed security policies properly. I'm making a connection with him. This man's been through something. This woman has been through something difficult and I know about it in the news. And now all of a sudden I'm connected to the individual. This happens in marketing all the time. And I'll give you a really great example in a couple of minutes. So stick with us. And then finally, people are, you know, what we're finding through this coronavirus and the lockdowns is just how important it is for people to make connections with each other. The physical cues that happen when we see someone's face, when we see the little crinkle in their eye, when they smile, these things that happen when you're telling stories and, and certainly you could you know, create YouTube videos for your business right now. If you're showing those beautiful scenes of the Caribbean island, that's one thing. But if you know, Steph has got a client that owns a Caribbean wellness place and that person is sitting there at their resort and they're sitting on the beach and they're saying, hey, you know, I really miss having all my clients here. You know, we, we were all planning on such a great, you know, 2020, but I'm going to be here for you when, when you're ready to come back and you're seeing that person's face. Now, all of a sudden, you're developing these feelings for that person in that situation. And that is going to make you more likely mm -hmm. to want to take action afterwards. It's wonderful to look at beautiful scenes, but we are looking for human to human contact to get us to think about what do I do with that? So. This is the video um, that I was telling you about a couple of seconds ago. Uh, I'm just going to give you a quick prelude. The reason why I love this video, and it's from the Sochi Russia Olympics, it's by Procter and Gamble. And Procter and Gamble employs um, quite a few storytelling tools here. And if we were live, I'd be out in the audience with you right now, pointing fingers at each one of you. What did you just see? What did you just hear? Um, because I can't do that on a webinar, we're going to come back at the end and we're going to um, talk about the video later and you might hear me talking over the video. But this is what I mean by here's a company that wants to sell moms something and look at the tool they used to sell. Sophia? All right, here we go. Okay, I think we have to do screen share. There we go. Okay. Can you guys still hear me? Okay. So think about the narrative arc. We've got a small child doing all the things that small children do. <laughs> Fall down. Get cold. Who is the archetype that picks that child up every time? Child's getting bigger. The equipment is getting more expensive. Now listen to the music. That's a storytelling tool. Gives you an indication of tension and conflict. The pace is picking up. Conflict. 
injury. Failure. And then the music stops. And it goes back to the beginning. I am the father of three children. I get choked up every time I yeah. go. Normally by now, I'd say 40% of the faces in my seminars are crying, or at the least, dabbing their eyes. Look at what they just did. They just engaged us in the stories of four moms with four moms, a hockey player, skier, figure, um, figure skater, I think it's just three, um, engaged us in the story of three moms. And they're drawing us into the emotions. And we get to see the faces of these mothers. Why? Because that's the subject that they're selling to. And for a mom to see another mom proud, for another mom to see another mom taking care of a child, it's starting to kick, like, um, like the neuroscientist said, it's starting to kick the dopamine into effect. And it's making us bond. And even though we don't want to bond with Procter & Gamble, a corporation, we're doing it anyway. Mm -hmm. And then their brands are flashing at us. This brand understands you. Mm -hmm. And now... We want to sell you some things. <laughs> so just to let you know, that is great storytelling. I am just, whenever I see that video, I'm clicking on the slides button. So let me see. Here, I've got you. There we go. Okay. Um, that is great storytelling, ladies and gentlemen. This in travel is what the big guys do. Expedia, Airbnb, their home pages tell a story. It's transactional. You're doing a meta search. You're searching for something. You're thinking about a trip and you need some information. There may be some cookies that you have been leaving as you travel around the web that might make, or, or if you didn't clear your cash on your history, might bring up the fact that, oh, you want to go to Chicago again? But it is a very impersonal way of doing business. Now, a friend of mine runs a small travel agency for high-end clients, and she goes about her marketing differently. Her message, her story is, I'm consultative. My clients have experiences that are designed just for them. And I'm even going to tell you some stories from my clients through my testimonials that show you this is the kind of person who connects with me. This is storytelling starting to come to life in the digital world. Well, but how do I do that? Well, you've always had the power. It's just you had to learn it for yourself. And having worked in corporate America or journalism for 30 plus years, what I know is that when you get in touch with you and your superpower, you are going to tell incredible stories that are gonna make people learn to know, love, and trust you. But you've gotta be ready to do it. You've gotta be open to the process. You've gotta be committed to not just doing the Expedia Airbnb thing. So let's see if we can write some stories. Normally this slide would build and I would ask you, tell me the elements of a great story. You know, Tell me the, your favorite movie, your favorite book. And normally what people say to me is, well, there's great characters. There's, you know, yesterday was May the 4th. Luke Skywalker is a great character. He is the, the archetypical hero who, you know, starts off on a journey and does incredible things. You know, Obi-Wan is the sage, the archetype sage. So these, these great characters that bring us into the story because either we know somebody like that or we want to be like that. The second thing is a setting. I mean, Star Wars, what an incredible setting. Outer space in a place we've never even dreamed of until Steven Spielberg. Steven Spielberg? <laughs> I think that's right. <laughs> until, no. No. no, it's the other guy. It's the other guy. 
<laughs> Lucas. Anyway, someone will mention it in the chat, I'm sure. <laughs> Get it right. Somebody post it in the chat so you can correct me, please. George Seven. something. George? George Lucas. Lucas, you know, that's Tatooine, right. what a setting. Themes, what's the theme of Star Wars? Good versus evil. The dialogue, how many great lines there are. I, you know, Some of the lines between um, Harrison Ford and Princess Leia, and I know I just mixed the actor with the uh, character, but that's what happens when you get to 55. You just start mixing up everything and everybody gives you permission. But the dialogue, the, the sassiness between the two of them, that's part of a, of a compelling story. And then of course, action. There, believe it or not, those things are going on in your story. You know, you think about a, a, an entrepreneur like Richard Branson, who I worked for for about a year. Richard Branson's story was he was driven very hard by his mother. One of his favorite stories is that she drove him out into the English countryside, dropped him off and said, find your way home. Richard used to love to tell that story to journalists. Why? Because it fit his narrative, which was. I have always been placed in uncomfortable situations. I've always faced challenges and I've taken them on with earnestness. So, you know, when he had to take on British Airways with Virgin Atlantic, that story relates. When he started Virgin Records, he was taking on some of the big record companies and the big record stores, right? He's the little guy fighting the big guy. He's the one who can overcome challenges. Richard understood how those stories made his story more compelling, made people want to interview him and give him free press, made the average consumer want to bond with him. Now, were there executives uh, in the city of London at some of the staid, you know, um, you know, tighten up your tie um, financial firms and accounting firms and, and lawyer firms that did not want an entrepreneur like that? Yes they self-selected out of Virgin Atlantic and they went with British Airways. But Branson attracted the celebrities. Branson attracted the business owners who wanted to be entrepreneurs like him. And so he built an attraction process for his brands. Mm -hmm. Stories compel people to do business with you. So your story has another layer and this is where it's most difficult for most entrepreneurs to go to. But given coronavirus, given that people have thought they could trust certain brands, given that people thought they could trust a process like planning a vacation, jumping on an airplane, going to a resort and coming back home without any problems, given that that's all been torn asunder, these things that underline our brand that are our compelling narratives inside our narrative, these things are crucially important in how you convey them through stories so that people hear that over and over again and go, oh, I know what your belief systems are. I think I can trust you better than I can trust your competitor. Oh, your tribe, they kind of look like me. I feel safer traveling to this destination because that's my tribe and you're part of that tribe. When you know what these touchstones are within yourself and you can convey them through stories, it's going to A, get those people to first get attracted to you, want to follow you over time, and when the time is right for them to pull out their credit card to do business with you versus somebody else. So it all wraps around what we call the covenant of the arc. So the narrative arc is a pretty standard tool that most marketers, writers, novelists use. It, there's a beginning that has something that seems just, you know, stable. Um, so, you know, Richard Branson is born in England. Okay, he's a child. He has a fairly average childhood, though his parents were a little bit different than others. And his parents, I think, had a little bit more means than others. But he did not have an extraordinary childhood that would make him stand out. And then conflict starts. Richard starts to grow older. He's having trouble at school. He's realizing he's not like everybody else. He's being challenged to stay in school. He's challenging his parents and, their, and what they expect of him. And now all of a sudden, Richard builds this little, he rents this storefront and throws a couple of beanbag chairs in and starts selling records. Now there's a conflict. Richard's going to be attacked by the big um, uh, record brands. But 
Richard is also attracting bands that only want to do business with him. And the climax is that he reaches a tipping point and people who want to be associated with his brand are building the financial strength and wherewithal for Richard to thumb his nose at the establishment. So what is the denouement? The lesson that we all learn from Richard's story is that if you have the desire and the persistence to overcome conformity, to overcome the institutions that might prevent you from being successful, you could be like me. That's the covenant of the ark. And we all want to be a part of that rising action, climax, and denouement. It's just natural. It's the way we are. It's the reason why we binge watch series on Netflix. It's the reason why, despite the fact that Star Wars has had 12 sequels or whatever it is, we still purchase the tickets because there's a covenant that we have with the storyteller that you are going to bring me to a point where I have that that epiphany moment and I feel great about the story that you told me and I come away from it with some kind of understanding that resonates with me. That's the covenant that people are expecting from you as you learn how to tell your story. Now, it's still a mystery how people fall in love with you. The covenant of the ark is not such a difficult thing to learn and master. But what you have to start to trust is the same thing that we all trust when we hope somebody falls in love with us, is that there's something mysterious at works between you and someone else that makes them choose you over everybody else. Clients, prospects are the same way. They have multiple choices of, of brands that they can fall in love with. And it's a bit of a mystery. And what you have to do is trust that your specific story, which creates your specific brand, is going to attract enough people who love you to pay your bills. And what I will tell you is, having worked with hundreds of entrepreneurs, there's three billion of us on the face of this earth. Trust that enough people will fall in love with you if you fall in love with yourself first. You fall in love with yourself enough that you can tell your story unabashed, with no worries, and if people decide not to do business with you because your story doesn't resonate with them, guess what? They self-selected out. I will never buy a BMW. I, it's not my car. It's not the thing that I want. I've self-selected out of BMW's market. And that's okay because BMW doesn't need me. They've got enough people who want a BMW. You've got to trust the same way. Okay. So how do you do it? Well, I use a couple of diagnostic tools. And, and I'll, if you ever do work with me, what you'll learn is that the same way that, a, that you fall in love with somebody and you don't want to ask too many probing questions perhaps on the first date, that's the same way that I work with my client. I realize that I need to earn some of your trust for you to start opening up to me. So the diagnostic tools I use slowly get you to answer questions of increasing personal difficulty. The first three pages that I usually send to my clients are very basic. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me a little bit about your business. How do you see your business fitting in with other businesses in the same category? And I'm asking you to just define things in a very objective manner. But what I would do with the second set of diagnostic tools is now I start to use questions that have superlatives in them. So don't just tell me about your clients. Tell me about your favorite client. Don't just tell me about the kind of vacations you like to sell. Tell me about your favorite vacation and why was it your favorite va vacation? Because now what you're going to start to reveal to me and to yourself, hopefully, if you're paying attention to yourself, is that there are the same way that there are subsets of clients there are things inside you that make you very specifically you. So you may call yourself a tour operator, but what you really are is a romance tour operator. You like the romance of, you know, 19th century books. And a lot of the destinations that you sell are trying to encourage mostly women to go to places where they can see these scenes come to life. Or maybe you're a person who loves all of the you know, murder and mayhem of Hollywood, of the 1930s, 1940s Hollywood, all those strange stories that, that happened with actors and actresses and directors, then you know, people turned up you know, in 
bedrooms, you know, murdered by somebody. You love that stuff. That's your passion. So you're not just a tour operator in Los Angeles. You're a Hollywood murder mystery tour operator. And we want you to start to get there because if you're a generalist in this current environment, the big money is going to win. Whoever is still standing when we get out of this at the big level, the big brands, they're going to have more marketing dollars than you. And the only way that you're going to be able to undermine their strengths of their money is by having a niche that speaks to a group of people that's a large enough base for you to pay your bills. And so we try to move you along that vulnerability path where you're starting to open up and go, oh, that's the subset of me. I'm not just a travel agent. I'm a travel agent who likes to serve these types of customers and really these regions of the world only. It's that kind of travel style that I really like to do. We want to get you there. And if you're already finding that story through these diagnostic tools, you're already going to start to have some of the stories that you can use on your website blog, in a video blog that you do. Um, and to start organizing your Instagram calendar around more content that reflects that specific subset. So that's why we go through this exercise. But like Glenda the Witch said, it's just inside yourself. You have to learn it for yourself. Now, I'm going to promise you, for most people, this is not going to be easy. You know, Brené Brown, the famous um, psychologist uh, down in Texas who writes a lot about relationships and individuals, you know, she talks about how one of the hardest things for all of us is vulnerability. And that is a human nature. That is a human behavior that we put these layers above to kind of protect ourselves from showing things about ourselves that may be too difficult to talk about. And as a result, that means that your stories very often take some work to be revealed, just like this poor man on the psychiatrist's couch. He's feeling uncomfortable. And finding your stories, and I use the plural, finding your stories may be uncomfortable at times because maybe they're about failures. Maybe they're about experiences in your life that for some reason you've suppressed and you don't, you don't remember them for some reason. What I can tell you though is if you're persistent through journaling, through using uh, an independent person, whether it's a good friend who knows you or your business partner, by using each other to hold each other accountable, you can start to lose that difficulty you have in finding those stories. And what I can tell you is if you are persistent, your stories will reveal themselves over time. So cut yourself some slack, get yourself a really good bottle of wine, <laughs> answer these questions about yourself, think about the, the moments in your life and your business life and your personal life that might link together and they'll start to emerge. Okay, so like we said, we want people to know, love, and trust you. Unfortunately, in today's day and age, um, it is mostly digital. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, especially if you're in the travel industry, if you don't have a strong digital presence, it's going to be very difficult for you to get these messages out. But the other part of that is that because digital can be so expressive, because there can be interaction in, in comments on an Instagram feed, um, that you can speak directly to the world through a YouTube channel so that they can see your face and they can see your emotions and how your eyes light up or how your face gets a little bit sad when you think of something emotional in your life. There are tools out there that allow people to start to know, love, and trust you. They could be things um, like, uh, you know, you're telling your story over five Instagram posts that sort of introduce somebody to the first moment in that story and by the end, You've linked all six posts or five posts together, and they go, oh, I get this person. I see the picture. I see what they say. And it was a narrative arc that they took me through. Um, very frankly, um, I think the two most important things outside of your website, uh, you definitely are going to need video. Uh, if you can get a Vimeo or YouTube channel and start to build that, fantastic. Um, otherwise, you're going to have to buy a lot of storage on, your, on your, um, your website host to try to host it locally. But video, as everybody knows, uh, I think YouTube is now, the, after Google, is the second most used search engine. If I want to learn how to change the oil on my car, I go to YouTube. It's crazy. But to have the image and somebody telling me and walking me through it, 
That's the way we are. So if you're selling something and you're trying to explain why you're the best for that, having a YouTube channel is important. And then please don't move away from email. Um, as much as we love social, as it's easy to do, you're collecting contact information, creating a newsletter that engages people on a regular basis, and that's your special space with them. And you start to cull that list down and you start to understand who's opening what types of emails. That's your best sales tool. That's how you're going to convert sales leads eventually um, to get them to set up a consultation with you, to set them up with um, you know, an actual booking. So email and YouTube or whatever video channel you want to use, but video and email are going to be your primary um, storytelling tools to actually get people to conversion. So how do you do that? We're just going to give you a couple of examples. Um, this is one of our clients, a travel business mastermind. Andrea is a mom. Uh, she is an entrepreneur, a serial entrepreneur. Her husband's an entrepreneur, and she owns a travel agency. In fact, all three of these stories are travel agents. And Andrea um, did this um, post, and I believe this was Facebook. Yep, this was Facebook. And she tried to tell a story about a trip she took with her daughter. And if I was to break that story down on the narrative arc, here's how I would summarize her story. My daughter and I enjoyed sailing on the Mariner of the Seas. So she went on a short cruise with her. The highlight was this specific place that we went to. And why is this important for you? Because if you're a mom like me and you have a daughter about my daughter's age, this is a great short trip for some parent kid time, or even for multi-gen. If you're a grandparent who wants to take a 17, 16 year old on a short trip, this is a great way for you to do it. That's the way I would summarize Andrea's very short story. Why is it important that she tells her own personal story? Because now if I'm a mom and I'm also the mom of a daughter and I'm trying to think of ways to spend time with her and, and I would have built this story out more, but well, why was it great for the two of you? What happened? Um, maybe that's great for a newsletter. Maybe that's great for a web blog or a, a vlog. Maybe that's you know one or two um, vlogs that she could have done to say, hey guys, you know, reaching out to all the moms out there. You know, your daughter's only uh, two years away from graduating high school. If you're worried about those moments slipping through your hands, let me just walk you quickly through that, and then she could show some pictures from the trip and you know talk a little bit about her daughter and what were the emotions. This is storytelling that sells. Here's another uh, client of ours. So Janine uh, is based out of Northern Virginia. She has clients with a lot of money. Um, they are typically dual income professional households. And in this particular situation, someone came to them with a milestone trip. They kind of only knew that they wanted to go to Paris. That was it. Um, and not only did Jean, Janine jump in and put this trip together the way that they originally described it, but she came around with some other ideas by listening to the client's needs and wants and previous travels. And she built out an additional side trip to Italy. And then when an unfortunate incident happened and the airline canceled their flight, Janine works 24 seven and she took care of all of the problems that the airline caused her client. So what's the denouement? What's the lesson from the story? Janine is this knowledgeable, professional, invested individual who makes your trip complete from a blank canvas that you give her at the beginning to anything that happens in between to coming home and feeling like, wow, she really made our dreams come true. And so you can build these narrative arcs by thinking about how the content that you have fits along that, um, that scale. So now finally, there are other people out there who tell their narrative in a different way. They tell it without almost telling it. They tell it through emotions. They tell it through humor. And what they're doing is, is they're letting their personality come to life. So many of us um, fall in love with individuals because there's something about their personality repeated over and over again that make us smile, make us fall in love, make us feel like, oh my God, that person gets me. And Nikki Gregory, McGregory is one of those individuals. She is an uproarious, humorous person who tries to live life to its fullest and is unabashed about mocking herself and using herself as that marketing tool. 
So let's watch how Nikki crushes it by telling her story a little bit differently. So that's <laughs> Nikki's face. Nikki has taken this picture and dropped it in in so many different forms. I've never asked her if she's a master at Photoshop or if she gives this to somebody who she knows who does it for her. But she took this picture that seemed to grab people's attention when she first posted it. And now she tells her story. She uses it everywhere. She uses it for Christmas. She uses it in, in all of these forms because what is she telling you? I'm fun. If I put together a group trip on a cruise ship and I'm going to be going on that ship, you're going to have fun. You're going to have the crazy, funny, self-deprecating Nikki who's going to be your leader. So if that's what you're looking for, that type of cruise or that type of trip to Sandals or to the, you know, to the Caribbean or wherever she's leading them, She's selling her story. I'm a fun person. But just so that you don't think that, um, and there's another picture of her in Dubai, totally losing it while her friend was uh, taking them on a desert Jeep tour. This is Nikki too. Nikki is, uh, did three stints in the US Navy. The reason why there's a woman receiving that flag is because her mother was in the Navy as well. And so there's another part of Nikki that she sometimes tells about her brand, which is, you know, I'm fun and I'm uproarious, but I am also reliable. I am self-sacrificing. I am not self-centered. I know how to give to others. And there's another part of her story that she occasionally leaks out that balances the fun, goofy part. So there's other ways that you tell your story, your belief systems, you know, those things that, that are your the deepest things that a client might want to rely on. Nikki tells them through pictures and these little vignettes over time. Not necessarily, this is how I took care of a client, but come get to know me, come be attracted to me, and I will repeat for you, you know, the, the core aspects of my belief systems. Hmm. And that's storytelling too, and it never ends. So, you know, everybody's got to have at least one summary slide. Um, I like to call them Richard's rule of threes. Um, you know, there are three things. If we bucket three things for you, hopefully you'll remember them more. If you need these slides, either you can um, ask Sophia or if you want to email me, I'll be happy to send you the slides. Don't worry about it. But number one, the base of great storytelling starts with you getting your story down first. And and I hate to say this, if you don't like getting personal, it is going to be more difficult. I can't get personal with American Airlines. They may tell me the story of a flight attendant. They may tell me the story of a grand, ground handler. They may tell me the story of a client. And that may temporarily get me to go, oh, American Airlines. But they're never going to be able to get personal with me because they're a corporation. Entrepreneurs have one significant advantage over corporations. You can get personal. You can get personal in a more profound and compelling way than a lot of the big guys with the big marketing budgets, but you gotta be willing to go there. And you've also gotta think about what is that personal connection to that ideal client? If I'm looking for adventure travelers, where's the adventure in me? And where are those little stories about both me being on adventures and also about my clients being on adventure. You've got to know what that is. And you've got to be ready to go there and go pull those stories out. Um, then once you've got your story down, are you sure your ideal client matches with you? Because if you're not an adventure traveler and you sell it, you can succeed um, because of it, but you may also struggle because it doesn't align with who and what you are. And then finally, like I said, you've got to master the channels. Email is your number one. Um, targeted social media efforts. And finally, email doesn't work well if you don't like CRM. If you're, if you're working with Constant Contact or um, some other tool and you really don't enjoy being in there, how are you going to start to learn over time how to send out those targeted emails? How are you going to capture those, uh, those click-throughs on your social that end up in HubSpot so that you can start to identify who exactly should hear which messages and which offers? So that's kind of my storytelling um, uh, story. And with that, I'll hand it back to Sophia. 
Awesome. Thank you so much, Richard. I'm making notes. I made some notes like oh, I've got to do a vlog and video and email, HubSpot, all these reminders. <laughs> and I'll tell you, I am the I am the cobbler's, you know, family. I, I've got to focus more on it myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's hard, right? Because we try, I'm gonna we what we do is we get really excited about something and then we're like, okay, I can do this, and then we focus on the um the what we're gonna do, not the how. That's usually what I do. I get so excited that I lose all the story that's behind it. I've got to go back and cobble it all together, but I've got to say this and I've got to say that. So so this is a great reminder. Which is why you need to hire somebody like Stephanie to help you because she'll hold you accountable. <laughs> she'll give you the framework. She'll say, no, you didn't fill that out yet. You didn't get that done yet. So there's a reason why people like Stephanie and I get paid is because we hold you accountable. <laughs> Well, and Sophie and I are both good with that. I think we're good at holding each other accountable. So like you said, having a partner or letting other people know your ideas, it's good to to hold each other accountable. Yep. And it also mm -hmm. helps to have accountability buddies who have different strengths as too, as well. So while I may forget something, Stephanie will be like, hey, do you, do you remember this? And, you know, vice versa. And that really helps <laughs> as well. I'm log in for the type form, Sophia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's great. Any does anyone have any um any questions? I'll I'll look in the chat. There was one question that Christy had. Is it possible to share those questions with us after yeah. the webinar? And I think too, like even if you have a crafted story, and we've been talking about this a lot over the last couple of weeks, it's a great time to go back and revisit that. And like Richard's saying, make sure it's impactful and coming from you because I feel like storytelling is great, but I always feel like sometimes I'm just pitching to pitch and I get in a repetitive mode. Um, so going back and making sure that's genuine and you're still aligned with that, and that's still your genuine purpose and story, and and you're still telling those those things accurately and that's a great point i think what you know as you were talking everyone is now going to have a covid story mm -hmm. and we're all going to say yeah it was really hard but then the real story is how can you to what you said richard find that vulnerability to say you know this was really hard and this is why it was hard and this is why i've come out of it with this brilliant idea because I had to struggle through X, Y, Z. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I also, another comment too, is like you said, we're all going to have a COVID story and there is going to be life out after COVID. So keeping in mind that I think we're all a little COVID fatigued. <laughs> so whatever you can share, that would be uplifting. And we had a webinar before this, keep travel dreaming. So, um, I don't know if we're all constantly sharing our COVID stories, are we all burn out on that? I don't know. Um, it, I think it depends, you know, telling a COVID story just to tell a COVID story is one thing. Mm -hmm. If it fits into your narrative and people have already subscribed to hearing about you, I think that's different. Um, and again, you've got to be thinking about who are you trying to reach? So if I'm trying to reach people who are struggling, with figuring out how do I market wellness in this new environment? Um, well, you know, if you're pivoting during COVID because of COVID, uh, how does that fit into your narrative? Then where does that fit in your blog? And if, you know, I, one of the things that I've been doing since we've been locked in is I try to take my walk every morning and I try to do, you know, a couple of minutes where I'm fa doing a Facebook live while I'm walking and just sharing some thoughts and ideas. And that's building my narrative. Here's, here's my narrative during COVID and some of my thoughts and where's my business going to go. If I'm engaging that way, then telling a COVID story toward the end of it might seem natural to people who've been engaged up till then. It might come out of the blue for someone who's like, well, what, what, what is that all about? That's just another COVID story. So, uh, you know, I think that's why getting to know yourself first and really being able to express that person unabashedly, it's, it's just, it's so much easier and it's so much con more contiguous for the person who's consuming it. Nina has a question. She, she asked, based on the fact that uh, the income is reduced or gone for many of us. How do we decide how many, how much to invest in getting help? 
especially with the future of travel being such an unknown. Stephanie, do you want to jump on that first? Oh, um, cool. <laughs> how much to invest in getting help? I mean, that's kind of a broad question. I'm not sure if you're referring to like hiring someone investment. Um, yeah. I would say wherever your business is based and whatever monetary help you can get and you're in need, take it. I mean, I know we're all always a little lenient to oh, marketing help. Um, I mean, I think, you know, this was a great exercise too with Richard and we should all be constantly marketing and, and sharing our story and hopefully know that you will open in the future and it's okay to put a moving target on it and not have a date like sandals announced they'll be opening 14 properties in june today and they've announced a platinum sanitation procedure um so i think as these larger properties i know you're based in peru but as as these larger properties get back on track the airlift will be there and you will be getting back on track and even if it's a moving target we just have to keep moving with that target. So as far as you have to do your financial investment, I think where you're comfortable, but like Richard's taught us, there's a lot of low cost ways to, to be doing that. It seems like. Yeah, definitely start with the low cost ways. And that's one of the brilliant things about websites and social is it's relatively inexpensive. Now, if you're feeling like, but I don't even know what kind of content to build there. Um, what I would tell you is, experiment you know yeah. it doesn't take much to pull out your phone and shoot some videos of yourself and don't even post them yet just just you know think about how you want to sell when things are back to normal and just you know see how you're doing see whether or not you feel comfortable see if you hear a narrative um, but then finally if you do feel like you absolutely need help and you're going to think about a budget for it you know, one of the things that we do at Travel Business Mastermind is um, we talk a little bit about storytelling and building your brand blah, 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 at the beginning. But within like the fourth week, we are asking you to own a cash flow statement. And I know 90% of entrepreneurs don't like cash flow statements. Um, we've got to get over that, people, because understanding how much is in your bank account and what a sale translates into can then give you that opportunity to say, okay, I invested in, uh, you know, I took that loan from the SBA, it's $7,000. And if I built out a marketing plan that would target the first amount of revenue coming in October, if you don't know what those numbers look like and what your payment schedule is on that loan, you don't know how much to budget and you're going to paralyze yourself. So, you know, it's, Using this downtime, the lockdown time, to try to go through your bank statements, go through your credit card statements, plop that information into a monthly cash flow statement. We actually have a, um, uh, uh, a template that we use with our clients. And now you can kind of see, well, if I spent $400 a month on a consultant for three months and they can get me two sales by October, and I know that that cash, you know, I'm going to get deposits in September and I'm going to get final payment October the 13th, then you can kind of know whether or not it's worth making that investment. But if you don't have the numbers, it's, it is so paralyzing when you mm -hmm. don't have your numbers. And just the low cost initiatives, um, even if you're on Facebook, Facebook's kind of become pay per play, um, but it, you can boost a post for a dollar a day um, and specially target it to financial income, interest, um, people that may be interested in Peru or wherever your destination may be. And then once those people like that post, you can invite them to like your page and then you have another follower. Yeah. Um, and then also I would say one other tip during this time, don't be afraid to reach out to your friends, your family, your loyal customers and ask them to share the magic of your destination or your offerings where they've been. Um, I think testimonials are great and everybody needs, we're all in this together right now. So everybody needs a little bit of help. And, and on top of what Stephanie just said, um, I don't know about you guys, but I've been reaching out to my competitors and saying, mm -hmm. we're, we're all in this together. And I've had a couple of competitors respond very positively to say, yeah, Rich, let's do a webinar together. Yeah, Rich, let's do a podcast together. People, you know, people of good nature and goodwill realize that we can collaborate and still all have our own clients and make money. And so 
Stephanie's so right. Just throw your net out and some people may be willing to assist you in ways that otherwise would have cost you money because they just want to help. And that's 100% true. Even through this webinar process, I've had lots of spa and wellness consultants, destination consultants, and they they all want to share information. Um, even on a destination level um, with properties within a destination I've seen working together like never before, um, destinations within the same region working together, just speaking on a travel level. Um, so everybody is, is looking to support one another right now and get back on track. So we have reached our hour. This has been really fantastic. I think um, as um, Andrea mentioned, um, she said that this was fantastic and um, she needed to hear this messaging as I think we all did at this time. Just a, it's, a, it's a good time to reset. Um, so I wanted to make sure that people know how to reach you, yep. Richard. Um, Richard at travelbusinessmastermind.com. And there's my partner's email address as well. Myrna is our email systems guru. The woman is just brilliant when it comes to doing email sequences. That is good to know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we also, um, also as a reminder, I know a few people have asked in the chat, um, we have recorded our webinar and we will send out um, a copy. We'll send out a link. We'll send out the slides as well. Um, within the next few days. Um, I want to thank everyone for being here. Again, this has um, been a pleasure to have you at uh, Become a Profit Magnet, How Storytelling Builds Your Sales, uh, Project Positive Planet, collaboration with Well World TV, Car Caribbean We, and Papillion. And Richard, thank you so much from, um, from all of us. No, here. thank you for asking me. And um, we're open. We'd love to hear from you and um, have a wonderful rest of your day. Absolutely. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.